let me thank branch chairman ca sanjay bujbal ji and his team including vice chairman ca abhishek sah ji past chairman sanjay nikam ji and i can see on uh, panel ca madhav ji ca am sethi ji and my friend c avinash put advocate avinash putda ji and all of the friends who are joining today good evening to all of you as uh, stated my topic is work contract and sale of developed land or developed plot of land so what we will do we will start first with the topic work con wax contract followed by sale of development of land and then plot we will discuss at length the chargeability gst application taxability and everything but i want that each one of you who are joining today you should be actively participating with me and whenever i'm posting query i'm sure that your most of the queries pertaining to wax contract will get resolved today i'm sure about it i just want that you should be actively engage participating with me responding back in the chat box with your comfort zone if you know the answer then also reply if you don't know the answer then you must reply so that when you correct yourself you get registered the correct answer of a particular query posted at that relevant point of time and both way interaction is always good since we are doing webinar sometime we become casual okay let's it, let it go on And then this casual approach will not work in terms of basic understanding and better understanding advisable my advice to all of you would be give your uh, one and half hour or two hours whatever time permitted to me and definitely this uh, time which is given to me i will try to justify in a best possible manner to pass on the understanding for which we are sitting today so let's start with the works contract yes i know that i need to discuss everything uh, post gst scenario but works contract you need to understand the background also where from we started if you look at works contract chargeability under pre gst era initially by honorable supreme court in the case of ganon dunkerley case said it is not chargeable to vat because there is no element of sale of goods it was sometime in 1958 then a 46 constitution amendment in 1983 in our constitution of india by the article 366 29a clause b deemed to sale of goods and from there vat chargeability started state got the power to levy vat on works contract services 2002 cst amendment for the chargeability on works contract services and these backgrounds are very very important because that will give you the plater how we are finding this works contract services in gst regime 1st june 2007 first time ever it was made chargeable to service tax so wax contract services was made chargeable to service tax and definition of wax contract had been given under section 65b sub section 54 of finance act then we come to negative less regime of service tax from 1st july 2012 declared service section 66e sub clause h 
works contract services. This is being provided. Now, if you look at the background of works contract services, there are three components which you must know very, very important in pre-GST era. The first component to watch in the name of aspect theory, whether both central and state can levy taxes on works contract services. This was the first disputed point an honorable apex court has held. Yes, it can be charged to tax by both central and state government. Second, for levy of VAT and service tax, we have seen double taxation. And uh, there were th three methods we have seen in pre-GST era, which was prevalent. A works contract can actually be divided. So works contract, as we normally understand in common parlance, includes material and includes services also. So if you can actually bifurcate material portion and service portion, then material going to chargeable for VAT or CST and service portion is chargeable to service tax actual method. But this actual method is quite difficult when we look at works contract services. Then we got standard deduction method. So there was specific standard deduction prescribed in respective VAT provision pertaining to service portion. So if contract is of 100 rupees, a standard deduction like in Delhi VAT given 25% for the service portion. So 75% is being assumed towards material. Bring in different state VAT provision. Similarly, under service tax, there was certain composition, means a certain portion is being considered towards provision of services and made chargeable to service tax. Having three method and double taxation, which was prevalent, but the important one, intention test. While, let's say I'm a supplier and I'm providing works contract services to all of you, when you're getting works contract services from me, what is the intention? So it started with a very important judgment of three member bench of Supreme Court in Coney Elevator. I'm supplying AC, air condition, along with erection and commissioning at your place. So let's take an example that uh, my AC pricing is 40,000 rupees and 2,000 rupees erection and commissioning, which I'm doing at your place. This contract may be in two form, maybe in two form, that uh, I'm charging 40,000 and 2,000 separately, or I'm charging 42,000 consolidated, where erection commissioning is being included. Now the question uh, was, and before three member bench of Coney Elevator, of Apex Code judgment, when supply of AC with erection and commissioning, what is the intention of customer, consumer? Was customer interested to get erection commissioning done or was customer interested to get AC installed and it is running in their premises? So it was supply of goods, but five member bench in Coney Elevator overrule the three member bench judgment and they have said that there is no intention test, need not require. What is the intention of customer? We will not look into. If a contract which consists of material and service labor portion, it will be works contract services. These were the background, but important thing, the definition. Definition of works contract. If you go back in pre-GST, the definition of works contract was, works contract means a contract where you got transfer of property in goods, either in same form or otherwise, and includes construction, 
erection, commissioning, installation, completion, fitting out, repair, maintenance, renovation, alteration of movable or immovable property. So pre-GST, Vox Contract Services definition, you will find it towards having movable and immovable, both together, movable goods and immovable property. Now I'm starting in GST, where from we started? What is the provision existing as on date? First of all, definition. And definition must be important for overall discussion. And definition of works contract is being provided under section two, subsection 119 of CGST Act. It is starting with works contract means. Means always give the exhaustive wider interpretation means and there are 14 terms provided 14 terms like construction erection commissioning installation completion fitting out repair maintenance renovation alteration fabrication building so there are 14 terms provided within the definition of works contract services but it should be in relation to immovable property immovable property so first departure, pre-GST works contract services was having in relation to movable and immovable, but in GST, it is only in relation to immovable property, where there is transfer of property in goods, either in same form or otherwise. So works contract service definition it's having wider meaning because starting with the term means 14 terms provided, like as I said, construction, erection, commissioning, installation. And then it is in relation to immovable property. With this background, we are going to discuss at length number of things today so that we get the clarity. So let me start. And that is the first point which I'm asking you. We always use the term construction, construction of building, construction of complex, construction of civil structure, a part thereof. And we talk about works contract services. Am I right? I just said what is the definition of works contract services. Now, when I say works contract services means and one of the term construction is included within the definition of works contract services, then construction is just one element, just one element. So construction is part and parcel of works contract services and works contract services includes a wider, even repair of immovable property is a works contract services. So for your understanding, maybe a piece of paper, a pen and pencil, you would be just noting down the important aspect which I'm going to discuss today. So that tomorrow, if you want to recall what we discuss, you will be able to throw your concentration. Yes, this was the point we have discussed. So under section two, subsection 119 of CGST Act, we have discussed the definition of works contract services. Second, we are discussing the interplay. You can say, what is the meaning of construction versus works contract? Construction is one of the spicy or element of works contract services. So construction is also works contract services. And how it can be concluded? You go to schedule to para 5b and this uh, schedule 2 para 5b is saying construction of complex building civil structure a part thereof intended for sale wholly 
or partly except the exclusion except when entire consideration is being received after completion certificate or first occupancy certificate whichever is earlier now this para 5b of schedule 2 to be read in conjunction with para 5 of schedule 3 and it is important and we must know this question is being debated at length whether immovable property per se immovable property per se is chargeable to gst this is what so any immovable property after completion then it is not chargeable so sale of land and building as such after the completion no chargeability because it is included in para 5 of schedule 3 and schedule 3 para 5 categorically saying subject to para 5b of schedule 2 so you need to note down second important point which is coming out from schedule 2 and schedule 3 what is coming out before completion before completion before construction is being completed it was made chargeable for vat and service tax both together in pre gst era similarly it is chargeable to gst in gst regime it is only before construction is being completed the term used before completion certificate or first occupancy certificate which ever is earlier which ever is earlier and another term which is being used except when entire consideration is being received after cc or first occupancy certificate my first question to all of you let's start let's say i'm a builder i'm uh, constructing a building and for this building i got the 100 flats so let's say you are giving me some advance of 10000 rupees for a particular flat and that is being given before completion before construction is being completed or first occupancy certificate Now ten thousand rupees only, as against the property value of two crore, two crore. Now balance amount you are paying after completion certificate. Only nominal ten thousand advance money given to me before CC. Tell me whether GST liable on whole consideration. or part consideration which is 10000 so you may say whole w h o l e whole or part consideration please tell me i given you my background that in what context i am discussing so it should be on whole consideration well done so all of you are writing so rightly it means we are going on uh, same page synergy is existing on whole consideration now coming back to the theme which i was discussing on second point entire consideration must be after completion certificate or first occupancy certificate so i'm not discussing at length what is this completion certificate or first occupancy because you got separate session for that but these are the terms i will discuss little later so schedule 2 para 5b talking about construction of complex building civil structure or part thereof so i'm parking this definition when i'm going to discuss sell of developed plot or development of plot chargeable to gst or not just keep this provision in your mind otherwise 
para three para five of schedule three had said sale of land and building is neither a supply of goods nor supply of services so this part is being done come to the third component and these are the pointers you must make a note of it these pointers will uh, enlighten you that on what point i'm discussing point number three now as we know that box contract basically includes material and services you are aware of we all know about that the box contract consists of material and labor you are aware of question which i am posting to all of you and which is very important my box contract let's say having material for 75 rupees services for 25 rupees box contract services can i bifurcate material portion separately and service portion separately for the box contract services this is my third theme and question to you which i will discuss at length now so before i start i want to see the answer i know that box contract services which i am going to provide i am a contractor material would be 75 service would be 25 can i buy for kit material portion separately and service portion separately say yes or no in a chat box yes or no in a chat box yes and no in a chat box i want to really understand because i given the question first then i'm going to discuss so that you will get more clarity on this point so i'm finding a lot of answer coming out yes no yes no and you yourself can see in a chat box that you are answering and lot of you are saying no a lot of you are saying yes also listen my answer now and that is how it is going to be interesting today so there is some uh, uh, some guy dibya city saying can't bifurcate can't bifurcate now ca anuradha is saying as per schedule 2 it is service so someone is saying it separate bills for both so these are the all argument coming out listen very carefully listen very carefully there is a concept called composite supply and mix supply composite supply means two or more taxable supplies in conjunction with each other in conjunction with each other naturally bundled am i right so meaning of composite supply so you must pay attention on each of the term which i am using i know you got the book i know you have got the provision i know you got the rules but when you are watching this webinar today please appreciate your time of one and a half hour if you pay attention on my term which i am using that will help you to understand to interpret by yourself that will help you that how you'd be building up the definition listen carefully now once again composite supply means there has to be two or more but taxable supply word used taxable supplies in conjunction with each other naturally bundled so works contract if you look at you got material and you got service in conjunction with each other naturally bundle naturally bundle if i treat this definition of composite supply then composite supply is taxable on the basis of principal supply of that combo am i right so whenever i am undertaking construction of a building or factory a mall i am a contractor you ask me to get your factory constructed your mall constructed 
Were you interested in purchasing cement and iron steel? Tell me in a chat box. Were you interested in purchasing cement and iron steel? You were interested in getting construction done. Am I right? Construction of mall or factory or office, whatever it might be. You were not interested in purchase of cement and iron steel. Cement and iron steel used and it is naturally bundled with the provision of my services for undertaking construction. So from the composite supply perspective, it looks like intention is not to buy cement and iron steel. Intention is to get the construction done. So construction is you what? Para 5B, as I said, supply of services schedule two. Supply of services schedule two. But we have to really understand, can I bifurcate? And let me create one more, you know, uh, background for you so that we can conclude this topic as well. CBIC had issued one circular, circular number 47, dated 8th of June 2018. And this circular, uh, I will summarize, but what is this circular is saying? Let's say you all are coming to me for getting your car repaired. Your car got damaged. So Sanjay has opened his video. I will take his help. I will ask him that he should respond on behalf of you so that we can enjoy. Sanjay, listen carefully as if you are representing all the participants. So you need to answer very sincerely and carefully. Your car got damaged, Sanjay, and you came to me and I'm a service center. You wanted your car to get repaired. Car to get repaired. Repair. For repairing of this car, I am required auto component. Let's say 8,000 rupees. GST rate 28%. And I am required to put my labor 2,000 rupees. GST rate is 18%. So total billing is 10,000 rupees. So I'm going to raise the invoice for 10,000 to you. Now, I want to create questions for all of you, which you need to answer. And Sanjay would be answering along with you. Your car got damaged. You came to me to get your car repaired. For repairing of this car, I'm involving 8,000 rupees auto component and auto component GST rate is 28%. I'm involving uh, my labor portion for 2,000 rupees, GST rate is 18%, total billing is 10,000 rupees. First, you all answer whether this is Composite supply or not? Say yes or no. Is it composite supply? Two or more? Say yes or no in a chat box. Only to that extent I want to see. So please answer in a chat box, yes or no. Is it composite supply from my side? Please tell me. So there is one uh, S take Chandan saying no. I really want from each one of you to get answer whether this is composite supply, which I'm providing. Please, am I clear with my question or not? Because I did not get much of the answer in a chat box. Shall I repeat my question once again? I really want that you must answer. That is the important aspect. I'm repeating once again, and I want to get your answer. I am in providing, I'm using auto component of 8,000 rupees. I'm using labor portion of 2,000 rupees and providing you repairing of car services. I simply ask whether this is composite supply or not. This is what I asked. And you must know in your mindset that two or more taxable supply naturally bundle in conjunction with each other 
Tell me whether it is composite supply or not. Say yes so or no at box. Most of the participants have answered this query in question and answer chat box, sir. So there are majority of the members are saying it is composite supply. No, I would be requesting them to use my chat box. Chat box. Rather than question answer box. You use the chat box because I've opened my chat box only. I'm not I'm not open question answer box. Use the chat box to my all attendees. Use the chat box. It is composite supply. It is composite. Now the next question will come. It is a supply of goods or supply of services. It is composite supply, no denial, naturally bundled, which is the principal supply. Though material portion 8,000 rupees, service portion 2,000 rupees, but what is the principal supply? What was your intention when you came to me? Did you came to me to buy auto components? Or you came to me to get your car repaired. So what is the uh, principal supply? Supply of goods or supply of services? So you may say goods or services in a chat box. Please be active in a chat box. I must see that uh, participation coming from all of you. And that will really help me to build up my questions. So please, okay. So answer which is coming out in a chat box as you are giving, and still I will request all the participants, even though you know the answer. Please try to use the chat box because I'm watching the chat box to get the answer. Do not post your answer. Do not post your answer in question answers box. Rather use the chat box which I'm watching at the moment. So it is supply of services, supply of services. Am I right? Supply of services. So whole combo going to be taxable, going to be taxable at the rate of what? 18% or 28%? Because auto component per se 28%, but services taxable at the rate of 18%, Tell me, whole combo going to be taxable at the rate of what? 28 or 18%? It is 18%, right? 18%. 18% leviable. 18% leviable. Very well done. Highly appreciated. Highly appreciated. Now, let me, re let me top up this question once again. Top up this question once again. Tell me, can I bifurcate? I know it is composite supply and supply of services, 10,000 going to be chargeable at the rate of 18%, at the rate of 18%. I'm asking, can I bifurcate 8,000 separately and 2,000 separately and levy 28% on uh, material portion, which is auto component? and 18% on service portion, is it possible say yes or no in a chat box? Say yes and no in a chat box. I'm once again requesting use the chat box. Don't use the question answers box. Write your answer in a chat box so that I can see the answer coming in a chat box. Can I bifurcate? So the answer which is coming out in a chat box, yes, we can bifurcate then my two submission to all of you, two submission, two submission. Yes, I can bifurcate, but as per the circular, circular number 47, dated 8 June 2018, and this circular is saying, Bimal, we can bifurcate it. We can bifurcate it. And that is what going contrary. I'm using the term contrary with the concept of composite supply. So the circular, I'm not, uh, you know, agreeing to it. Otherwise, it will create debate. Then what is the relevance of composite supply? 
but the circular is saying bemal for repairing of car if you know the value of material and labor you can bifurcate and apply the respective gst rate that is what this circular is saying and circular is binding on department binding on department now in this context my question is once again interesting and for all of you to be interesting can i bifurcate material portion and labor portion for works contract services can i bifurcate my material portion and labor portion for works contract services circular number 47 suresh amaria 47 8 june 2018 for works contract services please write in a chat box is it possible can i do that now my humble submission in my humble submission para 6a para 6a of schedule 2 clearly saying that the works contract which is a composite supply going to be deemed as a supply of service deemed as a supply of service please please bear in your mind so let's correct if it is works contract services then as per para 6a of schedule 2 being composite it is supply of services supply of services first clarity which i gave to you on point number 3 but government has done one clarification and one correction for one particular industry which is called uh, they have specifically come out for industry called solar power panel and this industry was struggling that when they are supplying solar power panel including erection commissioning and installation supply of solar power panel including erection commissioning and installation so let's take an example that you got solar power panel worth 2 crore rupees let's assume and you got 20 lakh rupees for your erection commissioning and installation now you are going and installing the same embedded with earth embedded with earth dispute was and it has gone to different advance ruling of different state karnataka and maharashtra one authority is saying that uh, there is supply of solar power panel and there is erection commissioning and installation which is incidental for the supply of solar power panel 5% gst rate another party coming in another advance ruling from state different state coming in and saying no no it's a works contract service whole combo would be taxable at the rate of 18% 18% and this was having dispute and no clarity government gst council by their 31st gst council meeting has clarified and made effective from 1st january 2019 only for this particular industry only for this particular industry that uh, such contract would be divided into two component 70% would be deemed as towards goods and 30% would be deemed towards as services deeming fiction given for this particular industry otherwise in general it is being concluded and in my humble opinion repairing of car was movable was movable car is movable can be bifurcated this was the question i posted to all of you some of you say yes some of you say no i have drawn your reference on circular number 47 which is saying it can be bifurcated because it is movable it is not works contract services so maybe we can take the advantage of that circular 
to bifurcate material and labor portion. Apply corresponding GST rate. But when we talk about works contract services, this facility and benefit is not available. Circular which was cited repairing of car meant for movable goods is not works contract. Works contract as per para 6A of schedule 2 being composite will always be deemed as a supply of service. Supply of service. My third argument, third pointer on works contract. Please tell me, am I clear to all? If I'm clear to all, tell me in a chat box, yes. So that I will move to the fourth pointer of today's discussion. All right, right with the full fledge. I want that so many participants, you should have clarity emerging and so that, all right, thank you very much. Now my chat box again, in the same way, energetic way. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Silpa Jain is there, Karan Jain is there, Ravinda Sinde is there. So everyone is saying yes, so we concluded. Come to the fourth point. Fourth point. So if it can be composite, then I will charge. Why should I buy for kit? Charge it in N28. Uh, Ranga Nayak, your point is not clear to me, but uh, okay. So all right, all right, all right. Listen now, come to the fourth point, back. Now it is on input tax credit, ITC. In GST law, you know there is negative list for availing input tax credit, even it is in the course of furtherance of business. And here you need to pay attention and listen carefully, answer it so that you this theory will get practical and will register to your mind. Section 17, subsection 5, clause C and clause D. We are going to discuss now. What is the clause? Let me first say the provision and then I will do the practical case study. Section 17, subsection 5, clause C says, credit is not available for works contract services used for construction of immovable property except plant and machinery. I'm repeating again, please listen carefully and then uh, we have to answer the queries which I'm going to post. No credit on Vux contract services used for construction of immovable property except plant and machinery, meaning thereby on plant and machinery if Vux contract services are used credit is available. And within that provision, one more uh, exception and exclusion. If that works contract services is an inward supply for the provision of my outward works contract services, then credit is available. So this is 17 subsection 5 clause C. What is clause D? Goods or services used for construction of immovable property on its own account, on its own account. So I'm going to use, I'm going to explain what is this own account. Even though used in the course of furtherance of business, no credit available except plant and machinery, except plant and machinery. So I have said both the provision and there are three things which you must know categorically. They have huge construction, 
and as per the explanation construction means reconstruction addition alteration renovation or repair to the extent capitalized in the books of accounts so just keep these provision park in your mind so that when i start practical you understand construction is using five terms as per this explanation under section 17 subsection 5 clause c and clause d construction includes reconstruction renovation alteration addition or repair to the extent capitalized and what is the meaning of plant and machinery for which credit is available any apparatus equipment or machinery fixed to the earth by way of foundation by way of foundation and you are going to use that plant and machinery for your outward supply then credit is available except any land and building telecommunication tower and pipeline laid outside the factory one more term what is immovable property what is the meaning of immovable property immovable property is not defined in gst law section 3 subsection 26 of general clauses act is defining what is immovable property immovable property means any land on building or benefit arising out of land and building three terms land and building benefit arising out of land and building and next anything which is fastened or embedded with earth that is called immovable property so i given you all the provision now i need to start with a practical case study first we are going to understand the meaning of section 17 subsection 5 clause c let's say you all are my client let's assume you all are my client reliance limited you all are my client and you all answer now you all are my client you have given a contract to me for 100 crore for construction of factory construction of factory i'm going to undertake I'm a contractor. Construction of factory for you. You are a client. Factory going to be constructed. Okay, hundred crore. I have constructed, and I'm charging now GST on this hundred crore, which is Vux Contract Services. Please tell me in a chat box. as a client can you avail credit say yes and no even though this may be a simple answer for you but please answer that will be helping me to build important one so there are some of the guys still answering yes but as per the law construction works contract services for construction of immovable property is not available so those who are making mistake like milin kumar like rakesh patni kindly correct you will not get any credit you will not get any credit under section 17 sub section 5 clause c except plant and machinery first part so those who have said yes please correct yourself no credit available now next part of this uh, questions next part of this question i have subcontracted this 100 crore rupees i am a main contractor right i given a 50 crore rupees subcontract to say someone uh, mr a so mr a is a subcontractor to main contractor subcontractor going to charge gst on 50 crore to main contractor bimal jain and bimal jain going to charge to reliance limited for 100 crore so we have resolved this query from bimal jain 
to Reliance Industries 100 crore, I will charge GST as box contract of which Reliance Limited cannot take any credit. I said that. Now the question is subcontractor charging GST on 50 crore to main contractor with a credit is available. Say yes or no in a chat box. Say available or not. All right, so everyone is saying yes. So well done, well done. So we are we are going fine with the understanding. Yes, it is credit available, credit available. Now, now, now the next component, next component. 100 crore rupees contract, right? Now there may be a possibility, I'm just saying there may be a possibility. For this 100 crore rupees contract, Bimal Jain may have purchased cement, iron steel, and paid the GST to the supplier. So I'm a main contractor for undertaking 100 crore rupees contract. I have purchased cement and iron steel from the market. So separate question, do not connect with the earlier one. So main contractor purchasing cement at the rate of 28% GST, iron steel, and now using this uh, cement and iron steel for the provision of box contract services. So tell me in my hands, in the hands of box contract service provider, with a credit is available, say the chat box, with a credit is available. Tell me the chat box. So there are maximum yes and few no. Section 17, subsection 5, clause D is now important for resolving this query. What is bar? What is being not available credit not available on goods which may be cement and iron steel or services used for construction of immovable property on its own account the word huge on its own account am i right just to explain this term i'm creating this example for you as against 100 crore rupees contract, Reliance has said, Bimalji, I don't rely on you. I don't rely on you. You may use inferior quality of material. So let me buy cement and iron steel from the market. So Reliance say, let me buy cement and iron steel from the market. And we will give you the cement and iron steel. So your contract is only 50 crore. Cement and iron steel, we will provide to you. We will give it to you. So here, Reliance Industries Limited purchasing cement and iron steel directly from the market, supplier charging GST to Reliance Industries Limited. And now Reliance is going to give me FOC free of cost to main contractor. So don't go to FOC portion now. First, you tell me when you purchase as a Reliance Limited and you paid the GST to the supplier on purchase of cement and iron steel, which is going to be used for construction of immovable property with a credit available to you, please tell me, yes or no? No, this is called own account. This is called own account. This you purchase on your own account. That's the region credit not available. But what I purchase is a cement and iron steel. This is for the provision of my client services, not my own account. So hence, when as a main contractor, I'm purchasing cement and iron steel and using for the wax contract, then credit is available, available. Only when uh, as a client, you purchase any goods or services on your own account for construction of immovable property, credit will not be available. This is the clarity which is I wanted to pass on. Tell me in a chat box, am I clear to all? Say yes in a chat box that yes, this part is very, very clear. There's no doubt exist.
Okay. All right, all right. So those who were making mistake, those who were making mistake, may, uh, see a Babab Joshi kindly go all along with me. If I will take some of the query a little later, but in between, if I take up separate question of for you guys, then it will create, it will, uh, it will break the momentum. Let's all you go along with me. Listen very carefully. Now I'm complicating and now interplay the interesting game. Interplay of ITC provision with the valuation. Listen very carefully. And uh, unless you listen carefully, it will not get clear. So you have to pay concentration and listen very calmly till the time you say, yes, you got it. I will not move to the next topic, but I want you should actively engaging yourself, listening to me. Starting with the query. Query is, as a reliance, you gave me 100 crore rupees contract for construction of factory. This is the question. But being interplay, I want to do section 15, subsection 2, clause B of CGST Act. Section 15, subsection 2, clause B of CGST Act. Listen. And that section 15, subsection 2, clause B says valuation. And valuation need to include, need to include, what need to include is supplier is liable, but incurred by the recipient. Keep this tagline in mind. Section 15, subsection 2, clause B, where the valuation is applicable, value, taxable value should include, supplier is liable, but incurred by the recipient. Keep this tagline. Now go back to the interplay. Let's start with the interplay. You gave me a contract for 100 crore. Now what happened in this case, even after giving 100 crore rupees contract, you as a company purchase cement and iron steel from the market. You as a company, client purchased cement and iron steel from the market worth 50 crore. Now you gave this cement and iron steel to me FOC free of cost. And you said, Bimalji, you use this uh, material for the provision of services. Okay, you're my client. I need to use that. But it was earlier included in my liability, supplier is liable. It was my part. The cement and iron steel, I should have provided. But instead, you purchased and you provided to me FOC, free of cost. My question start from here. When I'm going to raise the invoice as a main contractor, I'm supposed to get only 50 crore because 50 crore you have already purchased cement and iron steel and provided to me FOC free of cost. Even the contract was 100 crore, but I can't charge 100 crore because 50 crore you purchased it and provided to me FOC. So 50 crore I'm supposed to get, but for the chargeability of GST in my hand, contractor's hand, whether this 50 crore FOC supplies need to be included for the chargeability of GST. This is my simple question. Please tell me in a chat box whether I'm going to include or I'm going to charge GST on, uh, okay? So I'm getting the answer in a chat box, but let me put in number. Let me put in my number so that uh, more, more clarity emerges. Bimal Jain, though he's supposed to get 50 crore, 
but for the chargeability of gst it is 50 crore or 100 crore now that is the right way to understand it is 50 crore or 100 crore so that uh, we get the clarity 100 crore 100 crore supplier is liable i was liable for 50 crore am i right i was liable mr madhav i was liable am i right i was liable incurred by you so hence need to be included hence need to be included am i am i am i clear so 100 crore let's change this example had it been the case that no contract is your mr madhav contract is only for you gave me 50 crore and this cement around steel you provided so contract specifically saying in the beginning in the beginning that Bimal ji, you will undertake wax contract, but cement and iron steel, you will provide to me, F4C. The contract was very clear. I was not liable for cement and iron steel. Now, in this case, when I'm not liable, and you're giving me F4C supplies, please tell me, GST applicable on 50 crore or 100 crore? Please tell me, 50 crore or 100 crore? all right all right perfect perfect so all right mr abhay maniar is the only person i won't answer in a chat box that maximum of you must try to answer so that we get more clarity it is 50 crore because then supplier is not liable supplier is not liable Hands need not be included. Hands need not be included. So maximum of you has understood this aspect. Give the answer in a chat box. So let me summarize. So that interplay, let me summarize. My summarizing point. F4C supplies by customer, by client, provided to the contractor need to be included only when supplier was liable for that and which you have incurred. So I'm again, this phrase you must know, contract of 100 crore, I was liable to purchase cement and iron steel, but being recipient, you incurred and then you provide FOC to me, then it need to be included in my valuation for the chargeability of GST. So what we need to do, and when it need to need not be included, when contract is specifically saying in the beginning, Bimal 50 crore, cement and iron steel reliance will give FOC, then supplier is not liable, Hence, need not be included. And there is circular once again, circular number 47, 8 June 2018, on mold and dyes, has clarified this position for inclusion and exclusion of FOC supplies. Inclusion and exclusion of FOC supplies on mold and dyes same applicable in the instant case which i'm discussing with all of you now let me come to conclude this part so what we should do in such such kind of contract if we are talking about box contract 100 crore rupees you gave to me whole liability on me all responsibility on me you purchased cement and iron steel. You will not be given credit under section 17, subsection 5, clause D. And then you are giving FOC to me. Again, I will include in my valuation because supplier is liable, incurred by the recipient. I will again charge GST on 100 crore of which you will not be given credits, section 17, subsection 5, clause C, it become double taxation in your hand. It become double taxation in your hand. Hence advisable, 
in case of works contract services, whenever you are giving FOC supplies, please make sure that it is being excluded from the supplier's liability so that not included in the valuation for the supplier for the chargeability of GST. That is my conclusion. Am I clear to all? Tell me in a chat box. This is what I concluded. Am I clear to all? Tell me in a chat box. Yes. I want to listen. Yes, in a chat box. Those who are having their individual parry may park for the timing. May park for the timing. Let me first finish the topic to the satisfaction of whole audience. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So I have communicated this provision and Ankos wanted me to come again. My only humble submission that uh, you should look at the contract and accordingly frame the contract. I have communicated. Now I want to do the next part, which is important part and we must understand. And we are debating and asking government of India to look into this subject matter. Very recently, we have uh, celebrated GST Day with Joint Secretary GST Council in Delhi. Suresh Jain Saab, contract can be amended later. It is only before execution. After the execution, it is all after thought. So please make sure that such kind of things should be taken beforehand rather than things are being executed. Please. Okay, let's come back. I asked Honorable uh, Joint Secretary GST Council, I asked, sir, you wanted, you as a client, wanted to get your mall constructed, hotel constructed. When I'm undertaking construction services, I'm charging GST. And I'm posting this query once again. Again, it's a repetition, but uh, go with me. You wanted mall to be constructed and hotel to be constructed. Vimal Jain is your contractor, 100 crore rupees. I'm charging GST. You're going to use this mall and hotel for taxable outward supply. Commercial renting, accommodation services, right? So you're going to use this mall and hotel for taxable outward supply. Can you avail credit of GST charged by your main contractor on works contract services for construction of immovable property? Can you avail credit? Say yes or no. Yes or no in a chat box. Can you avail credit? As per section 17, subsection 5, clause C, you can't avail this credit. Credit is not available, Mr. Madhav. Am I right? Mr. Satish, credit is not available. Credit is not available. We asked this query to Joint Secretary GST Council, sir. Why such kind of provision? You are a chartered accountant, right? We all are chartered accountants. Let's say you got your office constructed. Mr. Madhav, you got your office constructed. And I'm your contractor. I'm charging a GST on getting construction of your office. Can you get credit? Because you're going to use this office for your taxable outward supply. Can you get credit? Tell me yes or no. Credit is not available. Credit is not available. Same aspect, 17.5C credit is not available, construction of immovable property. So I asked Joint Secretary GST Council, sir, can I undertake anything without having mall, without having a hotel, without having factory, without having office? I need to have, and you're not giving me credit. It is block credit. GST even got introduced 
the object class says seamless flow of credit. Am I right? Seamless flow of credit on, in supply chain, in supply chain. But section 17, subsection 5, to my mind, to my mind, I'm telling you, is not allowing seamless flow of credit. It is going against the object clause. Similar is the issue brought before the Odisha High Court in the case of safari retreats. In the case of safari retreats. Fortunately and unfortunately, both part. Taxpayer got advantage. Odisha High Court has said Bimal credit is available when you're getting your mall constructed or hotel constructed because you are going to use your mall and hotel for taxable outward supply. See, fortunate part, fortunate part. Even though there is a barring provision under section 17, subsection 5, clause C and clause D, still Honorable Odisha High Court in the case of Safari Retreats has allowed the credit on two broad parameters, the object clause of uh, Constitution Amendment Act 101, whereby seamless flow of credit was envisaged. And second, that uh, it break the seamless flow of credit. Credit is available because this hotel mall going to be huge for taxable outward supply. Unfortunate part, department and they are one school of thought, they are saying, no, no. When law is barring, this credit is not available. Another school which is looking at the fine tune, they are watching law provision so minutely, they will say credit is not available. And this matter has gone to Honorable Supreme Court. Honorable Odisha High Court judgment has been stayed. It is still sub judice as on date. Why then uh, we need to discuss? I, I really want to discuss this component for all of you. I know that this credit is disputed one. I agree, this credit is disputed one. Matter is uh, before Honorable Supreme Court and it may be decided after a year, two or three. And a lot many parameters need to be discussed. I said that object clause of GST introduced in the country preamble of Constitution Amendment Act, it is in seamless flow of credit, seamless flow of credit. But irony of this country that uh, they have created this blocking provision, credit is not available. Now I want to give you something important which is out of box. Out of box. Listen very carefully. This is related to works contract, but this may be related to any credit, any credit. Let's say, and listen very carefully. Let's say you're having uh, some doubt that this credit is available or not available. In my humble opinion, I will suggest to you that you should take the credit first. You should take the credit first but should not set, utilize that credit. I'm again using the term. Any credit, it is not only works contract which I'm referring to. If you have a doubt that credit available or not available, credit available or not available, you should avail the credit but should not be utilized, but should not be utilized. First part. Why I'm saying so for two reasons. For two regions. Region number one. Region number one. There's one provision section 16, subsection 4, time limit to avail credit. In GST law. I hope you all you all know that. Time limit to avail credit. Am I right, Mr. Madhav? Mr. Sethi? So if you don't avail credit then chances of not getting this credit will expire as soon as time period as prescribed under section 16, subsection 4 goes away. I'm again repeating, if time limit gets expired, then even though that credit was available, but you have not availed, it will be lost. 
Uh, am I clear to all? Tell me, at least on this aspect, tell me in a chat box, yes, so that I understand. Yes, you got it. You got it. Okay, yes, yes. So advisable, advisable, you first take credit within the time limit so that tomorrow there will not be dispute of time limit. Now I have said, but not utilized. So let's say Honorable Supreme Court coming back and saying no bimal, no credit. I will not give you credit because it is being barred under section 17, subsection 5, clause C or clause D. Or any credit which you availed, wrongly availed, but later on you realize it is not available to you. But I have given caution to you, you should not utilize the same, right? Then question will come, the credit which was wrongly availed, now you are reversing with the period gap, let's say two years, let's say three years, period gap. So when you're reversing, question will come interest and penalty. Am I right? Question will come interest and penalty. Let me ask this question. Credit wrongly availed, but not utilized. And you are reversing this credit on your realization you have wrongly availed. With the interest going to be leviable, it was only wrongly availed. Please tell me. With the interest is leviable, say yes or no in a chat box. Yes or no in a chat box. Okay. There is few years it's coming in a chat box. Few years in a chat box. Let me explain by practical example. I'm a taxpayer. Mr. Seti, listen, I'm a taxpayer. I got thousand rupees liability. For making thousand rupees payment, I'm using 900 rupees from my e-cash ledger. Let's assume. And I'm using 100 rupees from my e-credit ledger. But my e-credit ledger is having 500 rupees, which includes 100 rupees wrongly availed credit. So my example is 1,000 rupees liability, E credit ledger 500 rupees includes 100 rupees wrongly availed credit. Now, for making payment of 1000 rupees, I'm paying 900 rupees from my e cash ledger, 100 rupees from my e credit ledger, 1000 rupees paid. Department will always allege that Bimal. You have used the wrongly availed credit of 100 rupees. Whereas taxpayer will say, sir, it is my bank account kitty, which is having 500 rupees. Only 100 was wrongly availed credit. So I've used my eligible credit for discharging the tax liability. I've not used the wrongly availed credit. It was kept intact throughout the period, throughout the period. Hence, section 50 is important for interest, right? Section 50 for interest chargeability says interest is leviable when you fail to pay. Am I failing to pay? I'm not using wrongly availed credit. I'm not using wrongly availed credit. Had I used wrongly availed credit, then to that extent I failed to pay. Uh, am I clear? See, have you got my point? If I have used wrongly availed credit, let's say there's only 100 rupees balance in my e-credit ledger, and I use that balance, then to that extent fails to pay because that was not eligible credit. Then interest leviable. Then interest leviable. But since I'm having enough balance, there's no fails to pay. I use my eligible credit for discharging the output tax. Hence, no interest, even under section 50. Though section 73 and 74 
saying even on long availment, they can charge interest. But to my interpretation, as per section 50, which I said, there's no fails to pay, hence no interest leviable, and there's no question of penalty as well. Now I want to conclude this topic. Tell me in a chat box, at least you got it. Why I said that you must avail credit if you're having doubt to satisfy section 16, subsection four, and reverse when you come to know it is not available and no interest leviable. Am I clear to all? All right, thank you very much. So a lot, lot of you are very much uh, intact with me, going with me. All right, all right, thank you, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Moving to next important aspect, interplay once again. Registration versus place of supply versus GST credit. Please, again, very interesting provision. Interplay of registration, place of supply, and GST input tax credit. I'm sure you all would be liking it. Up till now, we have crossed almost one and a half hour, half an hour left. I'm sure a lot of you, those who are watching, they must be enjoying and uh, really finding it uh, good for their understanding. Am I clear? Uh, uh, can you say a little yes in the chat box once again, going fine that yes, it is very interesting and going in a way which you wanted. Yes, all right. Okay. All right. Let's start. Let's start. Now I'm changing your position. <laughs> so Priyanka is saying seamless, unlike GST input tax credit. Thank you, Priyanka. Uh, at least I'm being able to give seamless, which I promised to all of you without, you know, having a technical PowerPoint presentation. If you are finding seamless, it is you who are good because you are uh, accepting and getting and uh, acknowledging. So all credit goes to all of you only. I'm the only person, whatever I know little bit, I'm ex explaining to all of you. But you people are playing important role. now. Is a very interesting part. So listen very carefully. You are in Mumbai. You Now I'm changing uh, stance. You become contractor. You all become contractor now. You have enjoyed being client, sitting at the client place in AAC. Let me throw you on a open ear so that you should do some works contract also and see the problem of works contract services. You all are Mumbai, Maharashtra based works contract service provider. You all are, just assume, change your position. You all are works contract service provider registered in Maharashtra. You got one contract from Bimal Jain now. I'm your client now. For construction of factory in Delhi. For construction of factory in Delhi. In Delhi. Now my question, very simple question to all of you. Being registered in Maharashtra, do you require to take a registration in Delhi for undertaking Vax contract services. Please tell me yes or no in a chat box. Yes or no in a chat box. Okay. So a lot of yes and a lot of no, right? So much interesting now. Let me top up. Those who are saying yes, oof. Those who are saying it, and somebody is saying aggregate value of below 20 lakh, oh, Baba. It is 100 crore. Don't talk about 20 lakh rupees. Works contract and then aggregate value, 100 crore rupees contract. So lot of yes and lot of no. Those who are saying yes, question to them. 
I got 29 works contract in 29 different state. You, you, you got 29 works contract in 29 different state. Are you supposed to take 29 registration in 29 different state? Can't you do only with your Mumbai registration? Tell me yes or no. Tell me yes or no. So I know again answer would be yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. So let's listen carefully because this is a little technical but very interesting. Little technical but very interesting. For registration, there the provision says that you need to take registration where from you are supplying goods or services. Am I right? So you're supplying goods and services from Maharashtra. So you have taken registration in Maharashtra. I just complicated it. I said you got works contract services in Delhi. Do you require to take registration in Delhi? This is the point only I raised. Am I right? And a lot of you started yes and no. Let me give you the answer first so that you can justify my question one after another. I need not require I need not require to take registration in Delhi. I've saved this answer. Now, why I'm saying so, listen carefully. Why you not require to take registration in Delhi, listen carefully. See, the place of supply is important one. You always look at place of supply and because of place of supply, there's someone who has open uh, uh, voice. Kindly mute yourself. Yeah. So place of supply is important. Under section 12, subsection 3, location of immovable property. So your confusion, you're confusing yourself. The place of supply is location of immovable property, hence registration required. No. Place of supply only for determining intra and inter. It is not for taking registration. Please, first, first argument. Place of supply is not relevant for determining registration. It is only for determining whether supply is intrastate or interstate. Second is very important and as per the advanced ruling by Karnataka. So something which I'm saying, department always comes with pro-revenue. But there's one advanced ruling in the TND electricals by Karnataka advanced ruling, which I'm explaining to all of you. Now listen, for doing this VAX contract in Delhi, you as a main contractor would be requiring uh, material and services possible, right? And listen very carefully. If you disconnect, then you will not be able to. And then don't come back and say, come again, please. Time is paused. I will not be able to repeat. So listen very carefully. For undertaking construction of factory in Delhi, you require material and services. So I'm creating two situations for material that you got some supplier in Mumbai only, in Maharashtra only, cement supplier, iron steel supplier, in Maharashtra only. And another situation I will create, you got supplier in Delhi only. So we will go step by step. So let's start with the second one. You got supplier of cement and iron steel in Delhi. Now, sitting at Mumbai, you instructed the supply, supplier to supply cement and iron steel at the plant site in Delhi. The construction need to be done. Am I right? So this supplier is going to build to Mumbai because you're registered in Mumbai and ship to at the location where construction need to be undertaken. Am I right? Am I right? 
Now there is a provision 101B of IGST Act for build to ship to model. And in this case, what happened, whatever material which you are purchasing, you are going to use for the Vux contract services. So in turn, you are going to raise invoice for Vux contract services. Am I right? As a main contractor. So as per 10.1b, supplier is A in Delhi. And let's say you are B in Mumbai. And your client, let's say in Delhi, who has given contract to you for construction of factory. Now, this A is going to raise invoice bill to SIP2, 101B. And I'm sure you must be knowing that the location of supplier Delhi, place of supply would be principal place of business of B in Mumbai. Am I right? Am I right? So, what is chargeable intra or inter? You just go all along with me. So, do not get, do not get into it until the moment I say anyone. You should not ask any question. Just listen carefully, go with me. So the supplier is going to charge IGST, even though material is being delivered at the plant site in Delhi, IGST interstate, am I right? So this IGST has gone to Maharashtra registration in your registration. Can you avail credit? Yes, you can avail credit, definitely. And then, you are going to raise invoice to the client, client in Delhi, am I right? So location of supplier is Maharashtra, for you, for you Maharashtra, and place of supply would be location of immovable property, which is Delhi, you will again charge intra or inter, please tell me in the chat box, inter, IGST, IGST, right, IGST, inter, inter. Now look at beauty of this transaction, beauty of this transaction, beauty of this transaction. GST is a destination based consumption tax, am I right? This is being huge, consumed in Delhi. Arvind Kejriwal must get the SGST component, am I right? Supplier charging IGST on cement and steel gone to Maharashtra. But Maharashtra cannot keep the SGST component. You will avail credit, then use this credit for discharging your IGST liability when invoice to customer client in Delhi. So ultimately, SGST component of IGST has come back to Delhi, which is destination-based consumption tax. Am I clear? Am I clear? Please tell me, am I clear? Am I clear? If I'm clear, then this one part, one part we have understood, right? One part we have understood. All right. Now, 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 next, next. Rutuja, I said GST is a destination-based consumption tax. I said that. In all probability, this construction of factories happening in Delhi, so Delhi should get SGST component, right? But with the beauty of this IGST model, SGST is coming back to Delhi. How it is coming back? Supplier raising bill to Mumbai, charging IGST. You are taking credit as a main contractor. And when you are raising invoice to the client in Delhi, you are again charging IGST. So you're using the credit for discharging IGST. Ultimately, this IGST has come back in Delhi. So SGST component of IGST has come back to Delhi, which Delhi will get as a SGST, destination-based consumption tax. Am I clear? This is what I explained. Am I, am I clear about it? Am I clear about it? Okay. Now, let's reverse the situation. Supplier is not in Delhi. Supplier is in Maharashtra now. So maybe cement and iron steel supplier is in Maharashtra. What he will do? He will build to Maharashtra. So supplier, vendor supplying cement and iron steel build to 
you in Maharashtra sip to Delhi location. Am I right? Am, am I clear? Am I clear? Am I clear? So supplier raising invoice bill to Maharashtra, sipping to location where construction need to be undertaken. So when supplier raising bill to, it is intra or inter. Please tell me intra or inter. Please tell me intra or inter. Intrastate, intrastate C plus S, C plus S, of which you will take credit as a Mumbai works contract service provider, of which you will take credit as a Mumbai works contract service provider, then again you are using this uh, for raising invoice to your ultimate client in Delhi for IGST. Am I right? So using credit CGST as GST for discharging IGST. So again, with the destination-based consumption tax, Delhi has got the SGST component. Am I clear? Am I clear? Am I clear? Mr. Madhav, am I clear or shall I explain once again? Am I clear? Okay. I'm getting a lot of yes and clear. Lot of yes and clear. Okay. Whether this is doable, whether this is possible, this is the next question coming out, right? 100% doable. And with this location of supplier, important. Under section 2, subsection 14 of IGST Act. IGST Act. What is location of supplier, which you are? Which you are? What is the location of supplier? Principal place of business for which you have taken registration, which is Mumbai? Which is Mumbai? I asked this question. Do you require to take registration in Delhi? Lot of you have answered yes. I said not required. If I'm getting 29 contract in 29 different state, do I require to take 29 registration? Not required. Not required. You in Mumbai can carry on doing with your Mumbai registration because that is your principal place of business. You are operating and supervising and controlling whole contract sitting at Mumbai. Delhi only the work site, site office, only site office. They are working under your guidance. They are working under your supervision. They are working under your control sitting at Mumbai. Please then your principal place of business is the place that is the location of supplying of goods or services. Am I, am I clear? Am I clear? Second, if it is not principal place of business, then fixed establishment. And fixed establishment is the second point, not the first point. See, there's the, a the sequence. Principal place of business, which I explained, then fixed establishment. Fixed establishment is characterized by sufficient degree of permanence of human and technical resources. And technical resources, supervision, control, manage, all sitting from Mumbai. My Delhi is only site office. Only execution with the guidance, control, and supervision. Third, establishment directly concerned. That will again Mumbai or usual place of residence, which is again Mumbai. So if I look at the location of supplier under section two, subsection 14 of IGST Act, then it is principal place of business, which is your location, Mumbai location. Now the next question, which might come to your mind, which you would be thinking, sir, I have not received the goods. This. Uh, Delhi vendor, Delhi supplier is supplying within Delhi. Why he will charge IGST? Because of 101B. Because of 101B, he will charge IGST. That is what built to SIP2 model. Bill to, and I'm using this material as a deem received. This material I have not received in Mumbai. Not received. Will I get credit? Yes, section 16, subsection 2, clause B, deemed received. For bill to SIP2 model, there's a concept that it will be assumed and implied as a 
intermediary, you receive the goods and services. Team, so actual receipt is not required. Mr. Madhav, Mr. Sethi, and Mr. Satis, am I clear to all of you? It is deemed received as per explanation, section 16, subsection 2, clause B. So you have received and for the use of works contract services, works contract services. So you are using and raging invoice from Mumbai location, location of supplier Mumbai and place of supply location of immovable property, IGST. So what is the second clarity? Second clarity, it is deemed receipt, hands can be used, 10-1-B, even for the services. Let's say you need some services for this particular project. We discuss about goods. It may be for services also, right? So maybe some uh, architect who is providing services on your behalf. Architect is giving services to you but pertaining to this immovable property. So please listen. Who is directly in relation to immovable property? You sitting at Mumbai, not this architect. Architect is giving services to you and in turn you're using the services for and in relation to immovable property. So this architect and rage invoice IGST and you can avail credit and then use this credit for discharging your IGST liability because ultimately IGST, IGST has to flow back to Delhi. GST, the destination based consumption tax. Am, am I clear? Am I clear? Am I clear this aspect? Am I clear to all of you? So I have said, what I have said very clearly, I took 10, 15 minutes. I have clarified no need of separate registration in respective state. If this provision, if you say no, it is required, then it will create cumbersome. That is not ease of business. And with the provision of 10.1b, explanation of section 16, subsection 2, clause B, it is not only deemed receipt for goods, it is even for deemed receipt of services also. Please see the explanation. Please see the explanation. Even for services, they are saying deem receipt of services. Please, my humble submission, please go back and check those provisions which I cited. It is not only for the goods they are saying deem receipt. It is for even services they are saying deem receipt. And this explanation is now very clear. So to my mind, let me conclude. No separate registration required and the, for the chargeability also I've explained correctly the way it should be. Please tell me now in a chat box. Am I clear to all? If clear to all, say yes. There may be few that uh, they can have some still doubt, but uh, I have tried my best. I've tried my best to, you know, okay, okay, okay. So thanking, at least, I'm, at least I'm, I'm thankful to all of you that it was a little technical, but still you have grasped it and properly understood it. That is very well done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very well done. Very well done. All right. Now coming to the another matter, inverted duty structure for the works contract services. Whatever topic assigned to me, I'm trying to pick up those topic only. Nitin Gulati is just while ago, I said for service that he can also continue to charge IGST. So Nitin Gulati just while ago, I said, he can also charge IGST. If he is charging C plus S, then you will not get the credit in Maharashtra registration. So I've explained this part. I do not want to, you know, just explain, but coming back, inverted duty structure. As a works contract service provider, listen carefully, as a works contract service provider, I may be purchasing cement, 28%. 
But when I'm providing Vux contract services, my rate may be 18%, 12%, 5% possible, right? So my outward rate is lower than the GST I paid on inward. That is called inverted duty structure. So I paid higher rate on my input cement, 28%. But my outward is only 18%, 12%, 5%. Question is, as a works contract service provider, as per para 5B of schedule 2, para 5B of schedule 2, can I go for refund of inverted duty structure on input? I'm not disputing input services at the moment. See, input services are disputed by Madras High Court and Gujarat High Court. Let's leave it. First, tell me, as a Vax contract service provider, can I get refund of inverted duty structure of 28% I paid on cement, but my outward is chargeable either 18% or 12% or 5% possible or not possible? Yes or no in a chat box? Answer is Milna chahiye, but nahi milega. Answer is Milna chahiye, but nahi milega. A bimal jain kaun hai bolne wala? Nahi milega. There's a notification, 15 oblique 2017, central tax rate notification, barring construction, para 5B of schedule 2, for that you will not get refund of inverted duty structure. 15 oblique 2017, central tax rate notification you will not get refund of inverted duty structure barring. So when there's specific notification, not allowing refund of inverted duty structure, then no chance, nothing, gone. So nothing to further explain. So this topic is again explained to you. Now coming to the last component, which is cell of developed plot with a GST applicable or not applicable. I will take five minutes and close my session. In my humble opinion, <laughs> Yogesh Gauri is saying, can this be contested as restriction to seamless ITC? You guess contesting anything, uh, yes, doable. Who is stopping us? And I'm also asking you, please do that. And that is what uh, we can develop and uh, see the growth, that how things are possible. But nevertheless, if I'm a landowner and I'm developing the my plot by myself developing the plot and then cutting the plot after developing and development is what uh, there is drainage system there is a pipeline there's a lot of you know uh, you can say that uh, proper development is being done a little civil work is being done plot is made uh, you know like uh, something which is uh, ready to be accepted so raw plot is converted and provided with the basic amenities and facilities. That is called development. As a landowner, if I'm developing the plot by myself, then there's none third party engaged and then cutting the plot and selling the plot. With a GST liable, in my humble submission, no GST in this case. No GST in this case. For simple reason, I will continue to say as a sale of land. And sale of land is an immovable property, not chargeable to GST. Only thing I have only developed the plot with the basic amenities and selling the plot as such. 
so no chargeability in my humble opinion irrespective of fact whatever is being stated in divergent advance ruling second situation i have engaged someone let's say developer to develop the plot to develop the plot and now developer is developing the plot so he is undertaking the development of basic amenities on that particular raw raw plot with a gst liable so there are two transaction here the developer undertaking development of plot for land owner am i right and land owner in turn selling to the customer then to the extent of developer developing the plot and providing services to the land owner that may be constitute chargeable to gst but developer then selling the plot to the customer which is already developed no chargeable to gst i hope i'm clear i'm clear in my in my sequence am i clear in my sequence mr madhav mr sethi am i clear second part third part we get uh, joint development joint development where land owner comes forward and developer comes forward and they agreed for a certain percentage that is the joint development agreement a separate topic altogether so maybe i'm not discussing this separate topic because it cannot be discussed within 2 3 minutes you got a separate topic for this series joint development agreement so you may discuss this component of joint development agreement of gst implication on developer and land owner but in my humble opinion sell of developed plots in two mode which i suggested just while ago i given my clarity even though divergent advance ruling are coming out and they are saying no since you have developed and constructed basic amenities hence chargeable to gst i do not agree with that proposition and it is subject to litigation and can be litigated this is in my humble submission so the topic which is all given to me i'm through with the, it's almost 75 and uh, i'm a jain guy i don't take food after sunset delhi is fortunate part that we get little longer time period so maybe 5 minute more or 5 to 10 minutes we can take question answers and close the session but before i close i want to ask three question to all of you three question to all of you first question and submission today uh, we have seen around 300 participants attended today 300 participants attended today and we have tried our best to make it more lucid without powerpoint presentation but i'm sure without ppt you have enjoyed and you have understood everything tell me in a chat box am i right in saying so tell me in a chat box you have enjoyed it without ppt okay all right thank you second second you can always get in touch with me bimal jain through facebook through LinkedIn. facebook through twitter through linkedin through my youtube channel lot of videos i keep on updating lot of you know gst related update we are circulating in the market you may get in touch and all free of cost i always believe in sabka saath sabka vikas maybe sitsena will not agree but uh, i believe in sabka saath sabka vikas so it is all free you can get in uh, uh, you know you can join my twitter handle uh, twitter handle account or facebook or linkedin or youtube you can watch all regular update third and foremost third and foremost yes i know that uh, we all are uh, really learning the <clears throat> thing is uh, like we have to learn i learn and relearn lot of things are happening in this uh, phase we have moved from physical to e mode 
and you never know what happened in times to come. COVID is still a worry for all of us together. Kindly take care of yourself, your family. That is more important. And I, I always say, Jan hai to Jahan hai. So first you take care of yourself. That is important. Sitting in daily addressing to Maharashtra regions, uh, my professionals, it's a privilege and opportunity. I really thanks to all of you for giving me this opportunity that uh, we are connecting from Delhi to Mumbai without traveling here and there, why all India? And we are trying our best to extend and pass on our excellency of you know, knowledge sharing. And that is what I always use the term Sapka Saat, Sapka Vikas. Fortunately, it's a tagline of BJP, but we all try to you know, give best whatever possible. So from my side, I'm through. I'm handing over to the organizer, maybe three, four questions in their mind they can always ask. Uh, thank you, sir. Indeed, it was a pleasant experience. Very informative and uh, knowledge enriching uh, uh, deliberation from you, sir. And uh, never we felt that it's a webinar. We were thinking uh, the interaction was so live that we were, we were feeling that it is a physical seminar only. A credit goes to you, sir. You kept everyone uh, uh, interested and uh, engaged. So your words of wisdom have definitely benefited our members. So I, there are some questions on the, uh, in a question and answer uh, section, sir. Still, I'll request uh, some panelists to uh, uh, directly yeah. ask you some questions. Sanjay, can, Sanjay, can I ask? Yeah. Uh, Vimal, sir, thank you so much. The presentation was excellent. And uh, really, uh, you have cleared lots of doubt of members. Am I audible, no? Yes, yes, audible. Please go ahead. Uh, Vimal, sir, actually, uh, taking your uh, case of Mumbai, Delhi, uh, say a Mumbai contractor giving services in Delhi, and his engineers are staying in hotel at Delhi. So uh, the Delhi hotelier issue an invoice of CG and SG. So how this Mumbai contractor can get the credit of that? That, cre that, that credit is not available. Okay, even for the CG also not available. That is, CG should be available, but as per the you know system GST and Baba, which okay. uh, he can't see, na dekh sakta hai, na bol sakta hai, na sun sakta hai. Okay. but it is not available. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Any other question from panelist? Or uh, shall I take some question from the uh, delegates? I think you Sanjay can ji, read from the delegates' questions. Sanjay ji, yes. only take two, three questions which are more important. Because, uh, um, okay. So one question I would be asking. Okay, sir. Uh, welcome, sir. Shanbak, sir, you ask question. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, Vimal, sir, the, you explained very nicely about the disputed ITC credit. So far as it is not actually utilized, there should not be any penalty. As far as the interest is concerned, I have understood. But as far as the penalty part is concerned, the department always says that the words used there are availed or utilized. So since you have availed, penalty is liable. That is their stand. Can you please throw some more light on this? The 73 is a non-fraud case and under section 73, subsection 5. Yeah. When you are reversing credit su moto and intimating to the department, there is no penalty provision. Okay. There is no penalty provision. So maybe you have to go back and look at the provision under which provision. They might be invoking 74, subsection 5. Okay. We have 15% penalty before issuance of so-called notice. Yeah. And that's what they are trying to do that. So you have to argue a case that this is not a mens rea case, separation, fraud, and uh, collusion. This is a case of bona fide-ness. Okay. So uh, penalty is not liable before issuance of so-called notice. Uh, when you look at 73, 73, sub 73 uh, subsection 5. Yeah, it uses the word intentionally also, no, sir? See, intentionally is uh, coming under 74. See, everything coming under 74. See, separation is eligible when intentionally you want to evade taxes, right? Yeah. Uh, intentionally cannot be used in uh, non-fraud cases. Correct. There's no intention to evade taxes. So maybe this is the part we have to deliberate. Tomorrow I got one uh, program for uh, Gujarat region, drafting and pleading. 
So maybe all of you can join tomorrow also on drafting and pleading. That is a different topic altogether, but you will get different insight that uh, how we need to prepare ourselves in terms of drafting and pleading when we get any subject matter disputed by the department. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Right, right. Uh, one request to members, uh, kindly, kindly limit your questions to the today's topic only. Maybe and, uh, maximum three questions, Sanjay ji, yes. because I don't take food after sunset. So yeah, yeah. I've crossed my time, but still I can take two, three questions. So you pick up two, three best questions, which you feel like. Yes, only two questions I'll ask, sir. So one is a detailed question, uh, whether SendVat of uh, ST paid Circo on lease premium is available under CCR 2004, uh, because only 30% portion is taxable under service tax and 70% deduction abatement was there and this 70% portion comprise of material and land deduction. So since land but deduction- Available for input services, no bar. It is only bar on inputs provided other factual position need to be checked. Right, right, right. The next question is, uh, I'm registered in Mumbai as a car service center, car from Karnataka came for service, asking for IGST billing, what should we charge? So when you talk about car, it's coming for repairing at uh, interstate location what you should charge. That is what the point coming out. If you charge C plus S, then credit will not flow to the GST in registration of other state. That is the big dispute, which is going on as on date in the market. To my mind, uh, and in my humble opinion, it may be disputed uh, and it may be having a divergent perspective. I will always say that this is repairing services and repairing services is being offered to a customer and location of recipient going to be important. Like we are debating intermediary. Intermediary Bombay High Court judgment in the Dharminder M. Jani case, two member of division bench giving dissenting views. If you go with my humble opinion, then location of recipient, IGST should be charged. Thank you, sir. Uh, I hope my, our member can understand uh, there is a shortage of time. And London speaker has deliberated for long period. We will compile all the questions and we will put those questions in our uh, uh, WhatsApp group. We'll try to uh, look at the answer, ascertain the answer. Uh, as a gesture of token of our respect to you, sir, I'll request our senior committee member, uh, Fadke, sir, to present a hearty word of thanks to you. Fadke, sir, uh, take the charge. Himal, sir. We all are really enjoyed the talk. It was very interesting, sir, and impressing also. Clarity in the said point, said topic is transferred from you to all of us, sir. You gave out of box ideas about gray areas in ITC. We will never forget the topic WCT and ITC. Every point you taught is embossed on our memory. Live sessions with responses from attendees has fixed everyone on each chair, and we never realized how two hours got passed. Sir, practical examples and cases helped us in evaporating our doubts. We all will join you, sir, tomorrow. Certainly. <laughs> the Rimal, sir, has uh, empowered all of us with value addition. I request all of you to put your fingers on keyboard and express yourself through chat. Thank you very much. Thank I you also very request much. the Thank panelists you. to join the hands and express the emotions Thank with you. loud applauds. Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.